the tiebreaker series three two one and we are live what is up cp elite What's family up, CP? chad here with andrew tiebreaker number 52 and just filling here with tim uh, but we got a great show for you all about mindsets so mindsets are kind of one of these things that you know if your mind's not right you're not going to be able to you know like the everything else follows everything else follows the mind right so if you come if you if you get in a rut or something like that you know you need to be able to be able to change your mindset you know mm -hmm. change your mindset so let's talk about a little bit um to start with what's some things you can do to kind of change that mindset if you're feeling down or you're, you're just not acting like you should be you know from an athletic standpoint yeah well i first want to start by saying like I want this tiebreaker to be like an engaging tiebreaker from you guys in CP Elite. So think about the areas where you might struggle with your mindsets and let's get a good kind of chain of comments going on this so we have a lot to talk about here because I want to help. I don't want to just talk about what I think you're struggling with your mindset. I want to actually confront um, what you're dealing with with your mindset so we can um, kind of get you guys some results uh, just from this specific tiebreaker here. But yeah. um, what I like to start with is you know, a lot of people, you know, when I say tire or uh, mindset, they don't even really know, you know, what that means or like, you know, what part of their mental game is even considered a mindset. So mindsets to me, um, I kind of bundle it into this thing called thought patterns mm -hmm. and thought patterns. I like just for, you know, simplicity's sake, I put attitudes, beliefs, um, mindsets and, and put that all kind of into thought patterns and your, your thoughts have these patterns. And because um, I'm sure you can notice in the matches or whenever you're playing, um, you know, a certain situation might arise and then that makes you respond a certain way and you either get negative or you get um, a mental breakdown or you get an emotional meltdown or something that you don't like occurs. Yeah. Um, and you have to ask yourself, okay, why is that happening? And it's because uh, it happens because of thought patterns. So the easiest way I can describe thought patterns is you think of like, um, this isn't really applicable here in Florida, but um, as it gets more into winter up north, um, when the snow falls and you're on a hill and you're sledding, you know, the first time you kind of keep going down that hill, you, you form like these ruts and you might like do something cool and, you know, like go in a different way, like the first five, 10, 15 times, but eventually you start hitting the same divots and kind of no matter where you start, you're going to hit one of these divots. And the more you hit it, the deeper it gets and the more likely you're going to follow that path next time. And that's kind of how our brain, our thoughts have worked over the course of our life. So the more we think a certain way, the more it creates that divot and that thought pattern. And, you know, we can only think about our thoughts so much. You know, we have to engage in the day. We have to be at practice. We have to be at school. We have to be at our job or whatever. And so we can only think about our thoughts maybe 2% of the time if you're really, really engaged. That means 98% of the time that you're alive and living your thoughts are following a pre-designed or predestined pattern that you've created. And that's what a mindset is, or that's what a thought pattern is. And it's really, really hard to change that. Um, so to kind of answer your question, I first wanted to kind of explain what a mindset is or what a thought yeah, pattern yeah. is. The best way to do that is like the saying that I always follow, like make routines to break routines. Like everyone kind of just has this like hope and wish like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be positive when times are tough, or I'm just going to, you know, whatever. And it doesn't work. Usually the tough time comes and they're, oh, and they get, and they get all upset again. Um, so what it really takes is like, you gotta be disciplined in what you're actually doing. So luckily for CPU leaders, you guys have the blueprint. That's a massive routine that I'm sure almost all of you have seen the benefits from that. Um, so it comes down to really being disciplined with your day. And the best way to do that is routines. And I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm very much of a routine guy. Uh, I just actually created some more, a different morning routine last night. Um, but everyone's going to do their routine a little bit different. We have a couple of different schedules for the blueprint and you can do your kind of your personal routine, however you want it, but you should have a routine. I don't care if you're a person that's super scheduled or you're a person that's super free flowing. You need to have a routine because that's, what's going to allow you to do the necessary things to take those new paths in the snow until a new path, a new, you know, rut gets created and it's a positive one. So now you're po responding positively to circumstances. So it's make routines to break routines. That's kind of the saying that I always Yeah, um, absolutely. Because like I, a lot of what you're saying is really resonating because sometimes it, it becomes this reactionary thing where mm -hmm. you might not even feel um, controlled over it or whatever. You feel powerless. Yeah, you feel yeah. powerless. And that's why I really like the analogy of these kind of sleds making because at like 
over and over the same the same um, you know same thought pattern. It's just going to do the same thing, same thing, same thing. Mm-hmm. But the good news is, if you do all this work to make those thought patterns positive, you're going to have a positive reaction, and that's going to be kind of mm-hmm. you know effortless and mm-hmm. like you know what I'm saying. So to me, it's a big. Um, I like that this idea of momentum. Like you can build up this kind of positive momentum mm-hmm. and then you have these positive reactions, positive reactions, but it can spiral the other way, mm-hmm. negative reactions. So um, to me, I love what he's saying with, with, with the routines and routines are going to build up that positive momentum. Mm-hmm. You know, if you, if you're like just being all lazy, you know, playing a lot of video games, eating bad food, it's very easy to just continue to do that. Mm-hmm. But when you get on this routine, you get on a plan like the blueprint, you're, you, you can lean on it. It's easy to start it because it's so regimented and scheduled. Now you can build up some positive momentum. And it's actually effort to like get out of that and break that um, mm-hmm. routine. Yeah, I mean, it works the same exact way. You can think of it. You're in that bad, you're in that bad thought pattern because you thought those, those thoughts, you know, two, three, five, ten thousand 10,000 times. Well, it's going to take consistency to now like change that thought pattern. And that's what everyone kind of does or a lot of athletes do is, is they do something for a day or for five days or for two weeks and they're like, oh, I'm not getting any results. It's like, well, it takes a while to make these changes. But the cool part is it's going to take a, like once you're in that place, just like you're saying, now it's hard to get out of that place. Now you're always responding positively to circumstances. You're not having emotional meltdowns. You're not having mental breakdowns. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool. The athletes that are on the blueprint, um, the ones that are really, really engaged, I know you by name. I know who's following this. And what maybe some of you don't know is we can see who does the blueprint on a day-to-day basis. We can see how much time is spent. We can see how far they went in it. We can see the match point blogs they read. We can see everything. And it's really interesting because the athletes that do it every day see absolutely crazy results. And it's the athletes that might not do it every day that might not be totally bought into the program. Yeah. And it's just, I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, we're, we have some plans in mind on how we can keep everybody more engaged. We're going to create like 30 day challenges and things like that. Um, but you just, you got to commit to something, make the routine to break the routine. That's what's going to knock you out of that mindset. Um, or else, like I was saying, you feel powerless. It's like you try for two weeks, you give it your all, and like you fail, and it's just like stuff doesn't happen that quickly. You guys, you CPA leaders, you are top athletes in the nation. You have big goals. That's hard to do. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in six weeks. It's not going to happen in six months, and it's not going to happen in a year. You're going to make significant changes. You can see results really, really quickly, but it takes that consistent effort, and the best way to have consistent effort is routine because it's like you have to do it. You know, like your mom or dad gets on you when you don't do your homework. It's important to do the homework. If you don't do the math homework, you're lost the next day. You don't do the math homework five times in a row, you are well behind in the class and you might not even pass yeah. that class. You're, you're well behind. Yeah. So it's, it's really what I found is the routine. It just keeps you disciplined. It just puts, it's like putting intention and purpose behind what you're doing rather than just, you know, blindly, you know, jumping down the, jumping down the hill on the sled. And if you've ever sled, you know, it's hard to pop yourself out of the divot. Well, that's what you're doing when you're trying to break a thought pattern. You're like, I'm trying to do something different. It takes a lot of effort. But the more you do it at the right time, the more you do it at the right time, the more you do it at the right time, then you're going to start seeing the results. And the thing is, is like, you know, a lot of people would say, well, you know, I, I don't have that many problems. I, like, my mental game is, like, pretty good. And, you know, it's easy to, to think positively and to be grateful and to have a positive mindset when things are going good. Yeah. It's hard to do it when things are bad. And the way I always explain to people is like, you raise up to another level, it's just that much harder. You have to be that much more resilient. And if you pass that test, you just go to the next level. And, and eventually more and more and more people fall and that's kind of it's like a pyramid. There's only, there's only a few people at the top. There's only one person at the top. You know, there's only, a, there's only a finite amount of scholarships that you can earn every year. Are you gonna be one of them? It completely depends on how and how disciplined you were and how regimented you are with your routine and how many times, how much effort you put into popping out of those bad, bad habits and popping into those good habits. It's like literally the defining factor. And it's so easy. It's stuck in the mundane of day to day and just be like, you know, like, oh, it's just, I'm going to skip it today. And it's just like to, to like, I've had, <laughs> I've, I've had the, I've had this sign at the end of my hallway for going on six, seven, or eight years. And it's just black letters on white paper and it says, I create my reality. That's what you're doing every day. 
You got to set that reminder every day and you do that with your routine and you think that and like what you're doing today, it has purpose. It has an effect. That tournament you play a week from now, it's dependent on what you're doing today. What are you going to do today? Because what you're doing right now, it's going to determine that. It's too many times we're going through a day to day and we think it doesn't matter. We think it's not making a difference because we don't see this immediate result. It's not like throwing the, the popcorn in the microwave and, and 30 seconds later it's ready. It doesn't work that way. And we, you need to have, that's the biggest mindset shift that you need to have that this takes time. You have to be patient. You have to be consistent. It's just as hard for everybody. Yeah. Your opponent doesn't want to do this. That other person fighting for that scholarship to Princeton, to Harvard, to wherever, they're fighting for that. They don't want, they don't want to do it either. It's hard for them as well. Who's going to, who's going to be more disciplined? Who's going to be more regimented? Who's going to take the time to make the routine, to break the routine? And I get asked all the time, well, what's in the routine? I mean, I can give you a lot of advice on what's in the routine, but it's got to be unique to you. And it's dependent on your circumstances. That's why I started. If you guys have a certain mindset, well, how do I do this? How do I respond in this situation? Comment, because this is what these tiebreakers are all about, is helping have mindset shifts so we, you can start getting the results that you want rather than just going through and putting, putting in the work and not really getting the results. When you could just put in smarter work and you can get better results. It's like we were talking about today. There's, there's, this, there's this hole in junior development. There's this hole in junior development. Think about, think about the area that you're lacking in. And you don't have to comment if you don't want. I'd really appreciate your comment. We could have a better conversation here. But think about the area that if you're a kid, what you're struggling with, in, or if you're a parent, what your kid is struggling with on the tennis court. What's, what's preventing them from playing the best? And when you think about that, like really think about it. And the common answers are confidence, motivation, work ethic, can't transfer from the practice court to the match court. Um, discipline. Well, I didn't hear forehand. I didn't hear backhand. I didn't hear serve and I didn't hear volley. Yet 95% of your training time is dedicated to like those, you know, four things or whatever. That's the hole. That's the hole at the blueprint that CP is filling. That's the movement that we're doing. That's why junior tennis is shifting into this, <clears throat> into this, um, form of training where you're actually filling in the hole and the stuff that actually matters that's actually going to get you the results and it really starts with that thought patterns your thought patterns will dictate every single element of your mental game every single element of your physical game even when you're even when you're physically training like what's like so many of them have thought patterns when they experience pain they quit right that's yeah. a thought pattern and we like <clears throat> how do we how do we break that with um with well, the physical training yeah so our, our physical training um especially when you come here in person uh we take the whole uh, blueprint regimen to a whole other level when you get here in person but we use physical training to train a mindset we train a mindset with that we train a fight or flight response choose fight don't quit um, you're capable of so much more than you think and we use very safe physical training to do that that happens to be really amazing training for your body on the tennis court as well but it is unparalleled the mental gains mm -hmm. that we see in the gym like 10 feet that way mm -hmm. the mental gain like the I, I can't tell you people people accomplish stuff um that they never thought was possible and guess what that did for them on the court like i'm talking like they, they feel like superman superwoman yeah absolutely and, like, and, and shout out to anna katz is just one example she came in here on the first day what did she hold a minute 20 lunge less than that maybe even 40, less than that she came in for the elite experience roughly maybe three four months later back to back five minute lunges that's the kind of gains that, and it's interesting it's like that's the kind of gains that actually exist inside you already yeah. you just haven't tapped into it yet and that's what's going to be required of you as you step up in level it's going to be required that you're at that level because to play seven matches in a row, to beat um, top seeds again and again and again, that's challenging, that's hard. Are you training like that? Are you training with the same exact mindset? Are you going into practice? And I was, I mean, I was, I forget who I was just talking to. I just had a jump start with an athlete. And I said, you know, do you prepare for practice like finals of the hard courts? Do you, do you treat it that same way? Do you warm up the same way? Do you think the same way? Do you eat the same breakfast? Did you go to bed early last night? And I'm not saying you go ruin your entire life and just be super, super dedicated person here, but there's obviously a balance to that, but it just goes to show, I mean, how bad do you actually want this? Right. You know, and that's, so it's like, it takes that mindset and, and that's, 
that's growth, you know, and, you know, growing pains are a real thing. They're a physical thing, but they're also a mental thing. And it's really, really challenging to really harness what you're actually capable of. That's what the elite experience and our, and our kind of mini camps here are for is really altering the way you, you, you previously thought about yourself, altering that to the point where, wow, like in a matter of one day, three days, five days, I'm 300% better. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that that exists in all of you guys. Every single person that's watching this, or for all the parents, all your kids, that their potential is so much higher than where they're currently operating. And the gap between that is their mindset. And they shift it with routines by being consistent with and being disciplined with the stuff that's yeah. that's necessary to do. You know, make routines to break routines. Now you hit it on the head when you're saying, Hey, do you go to practice like you're going to play the finals of the of hardcore? Like the the biggest problem with training and this is coming from a physical trainer kind of standpoint, is people don't train with the same emotional, intellectual, um, spiritual participation as they do when they compete. Like it's impossible to mimic it, but people aren't even attempting it. Like you have to go into the gym and take it that seriously. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're just going through the motions and that's the biggest problem. That's this gap we're talking about. And, you know, the gyms that we've been in and the professional athletes that we've been around, like, they train at this level. It's in, it's a crazy thing to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is really crazy. Um, you know, a f physical training is a great way to, to shift that, that from that, from that mental standpoint because it's so real and it's so, it's so, like, in your face, like, you can't escape from it. Um, but I'm sure all you see people out is you know what it's like to hold a five-minute lunch or at least try to hold a five-minute lunch and this is just a small example. Are you sitting there trying to block out everything because it's so painful? Or are you sitting there and focusing on firing your muscles harder regardless that you're in pain? Because when you're on the tennis court, you're not allowed to block out everything. You're not allowed to do it. You're going to lose. You need to be able to block out the pain, but you need to be able to focus on what you need to be able to do. You need to be able to stay in that calm, relaxed state. So you, physical training is such a good... Um, way to work on that because it's so real and it's so in your face and you can't escape from it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's one we, of the best we, ways. We to got it. a comment in from the Martellis. They said, Olivia said she does her breathing and, and the affirmations to change her mindset. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a, so that's the next thing I was going to say is if you've had a jump start with me, then you know um, I'm, I'm really serious about pinpointing the things that are holding you back. Like too many people are just general, oh, I, I, you know, have a mental break. I can't focus. It's like, well, what can't you focus at? At what points are you not able to focus at? Well, specifically, what situations? Because if you can pinpoint the situations, then you can create a solution for it. And just like I was saying, it's very easy to have a positive mindset when things are going good. It's only when things are going bad. So concentrating, like what, if this is a bad time, this is a challenging time, um, and challenge, as, as you guys know, challenges are just another word for opportunity. If this is a challenging time, this is an opportunity for me to recognize and, and, and increase the way or, or change the way um, reacting to this, to this circumstance. And if you consciously do that enough, it becomes a subconscious response. And we talk about that a lot in the, in the physical trainings, that flight or fight mechanism, that you're actually training this internal response that when things are, are hard and, and bad, you, res you, you kind of dive into it rather than shine away from it. Um, and really, like, that's my definition of, of confidence. Like, I, the, I, the, I've had so many discussions with people on, like, what the definition of confidence is. And my definition is being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Because it's not just about feeling good. If it was just a feeling, every time you face a new challenging circumstance, every time you played a little bit of a higher seed, every time you went to a, a higher level tournament, you wouldn't be confident anymore. It'd be like this. But if you can build the resilience where you're comfortable in uncomfortable positions, meaning you are sure of yourself in area, in at times where people are usually unsure about themselves, that's confidence. So now you, you it's not bothering anymore, you anymore. And that happens, that doesn't, you don't just gain that. That confidence is a skill. You don't just gain that by doing nothing. You gain that by pushing yourself every single day in training, focusing when you need to focus, and, and trying hard to push yourself out of those, out of those rivets in the snow and, and, get, um, and start creating positive, positive habits. And the more you do that, the more resilient you become to adverse circumstances. The more resilient you become to adverse circumstances, the more confidence you have. The more confidence you have, the, higher, the closer you get to your potential. And the closer you get to your potential, the better you play. The better you play, the closer you get to your goals.
Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Boom. Uh, Maisie has a comment. She says, um, first of all, Maisie's coming down to South Florida here pretty soon. We're looking forward to training yeah, Maisie at CPHQ. But she says, uh, I'm struggling with translating adjustment into actions. I'll start off making the correction and then go back to the old way without realizing it. Yeah, so that's just, you know, Maisie, you know, you're a, you're a young girl. It's, it's you know, it's, this takes, pay, it takes time. It takes patience. And like what I was saying before. That awareness <coughs> is like the first step. Yeah, that's, that's excellent awareness. And, and it can be kind of like, it can make you like sad. You're like, geez, I'm like putting all this effort in. I like keep reverting back to these old patterns. That's why I said to really pinpoint, like, like, if you want to comment, but pinpoint more, the more specific areas that you actually turn back in. I don't know if you're talking about an actual like technical change you're trying to make or if it's a mindset shift that you're trying to make, but you have to pinpoint it or else you don't know what routine to make in order to, um, you know, break your old, your old thought patterns. The more specific you can get, then you can specifically battle and be aware of it. And because the thing is, like I was saying, you can only be aware like 2% of the time. We don't have the time to think about our thoughts that much. Yeah. But if you can pinpoint, you can make sure that 2% that you're thinking about it are the times you're trying to change. Not just the times you're sitting there playing video games or relaxing or watching TV. You know. So once you can pinpoint it, then you can really attack that area and improve on it. And like I was saying, Maisie, you know, I'm sure the adjustment that you're trying to make, you've probably done it wrong five to 10,000 times. So it's gonna take some time to change it. And if you want a little secret on that, the accelerator to make that change quicker is excitement and positivity. If you can actually be excited and positive and grateful that you have the opportunity to make this adjustment rather than just getting mad that you can't make the adjustment, it's the difference between doing it you know, so fast and doing it five times faster. It's really that big of a difference. So the first thing is a pinpoint, but the second thing is what are you actually thinking during that adjustment? Like, what is your actual thought process? You know, we, we're, we have like unlimited capability with our minds and we limit ourselves so much because we get angry over little things and we get upset and frustrated and annoyed over little things. When really, if we just thought about it in a positive manner and we said, I'm hyped to break this thought pattern that's been holding me back, I'm so excited for how good I'm gonna play when it's broken, I'm so hyped. If you have that thought process, there's like, I always describe it as all these little people that live in your head that control your whole life and they're all like, oh yeah, let's do it, it's awesome. Let's make it happen. And all of a sudden, like every element of you is working in the same direction rather than half of the little people in your head going, no, nah, I don't think we can do it. And the other half's like, no, we should do it. And, and you're not gonna get very far like that. It's gonna be really hard to break that thought pattern. It's gonna be a slow process. You'll probably eventually do it. It's gonna be a slow process. You, you'll make it more painful than it has to be. And Having a positive mindset and, and gratitude in that, in that space, that's just another example of being disciplined. That's a growth thing. If you can do that, you are already head and shoulders above 99% of the people on this planet. 99% of the people on this planet aren't willing to do that. Not willing to do it. But you are amazing. So that's why you're going to see the improvement that you want to see. Yeah. No, she's, and she, she clarified it. She's talking more about technical aspects, which, you know, there's a lot of... Works the same way. There's out. a lot of muscle memory there to, to overcome, too. A lot of years yep. of... Of trying to adjust a, a tech, I mean, tennis is a very technical sport, you know, to change muscle memory, to change a lot of these aspects sometimes takes some time. Yeah. So just being patient but even, and positive. Even, even with technique, you know, the changes are going through mental pathways. Yeah. The changes you're trying to make are going through mental pathways. And if you're frustrated in the moment, it's like closing some of those pathways up. There's only going to be a certain amount that gets to your muscle memory. You're only going to ch make that change so quickly. And it's really interesting, this is very, it's easy to understand this when you're trying to be creative. So think about a time when you're trying to be creative, when you're in a really happy, excited, and grateful state, you're incredibly creative, right? You, you play better tennis, you might do, you know, if you paint or music or whatever it is, you're more creative. It's a great way to visualize this. But if you're angry and you're, and you're not doing good, your, creative, your creativity is really hindered. Well, it's the same exact way, especially in a sport like tennis. There's a massive amount of creativity. I know technical stuff can be very mundane, but it works the same exact way. If you want the, those pathways are going to be closed if you have, um, you know, if you're frustrated or if you're angry. And I understand it is frustrating, but at the same time, you can turn that frustration, you can turn that challenge into this is opportunity and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Because if you didn't experience the challenge, there wouldn't even be a way for you to get better. The challenge is the doorway for you to get better. 
So we got to be grateful for the doorways. The challenges are the opportunities. So, so it works the same exact way. It's a mental mindset shift, but it's also if you're if you're making technical changes, it is all you know a matter of the mind and, and how many pathways are open for you to learn and make adjustments. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. I mean, <laughs> that, that's a, that's some pretty good stuff. Hope that answers some of your guys' questions. Um, if you have any other discussion points or topics, let us know. Uh, we base these, the tiebreaker show off your feedback, off your questions. So uh, if not, we will see you um, next week. Same time, same place, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Peace. What's up, CP family? I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Tiebreaker series. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out every Wednesday we post a tiebreaker.